Welcome back to part two, JavaScript Object Notation, or simply just JSON. In this part, we'll give an overview of JavaScript Object Notation, including the formatting and syntax used in the language. We'll look at various data types supported by JSON, as well as proper formatting and what results in, uh, when you don't have proper formatting or syntax errors. JavaScript Object Notation is a subset of JavaScript so it can be natively recognized and used directly in the JavaScript programming language. JSON data begins with a root object, denoted with opening and closing curly brackets. Each piece of data is represented as a key value pair. The key is a string denoted with double quotes. The value can be any number of types that we'll look at shortly. The key and the value are separated by a single colon. Each key value pair is separated by a comma. Here's a full example. This example represents a single enrollment record from our previous examples, including it includes data on a student, John student, and a course. The student itself is an object that has several pieces of data, including a first name, last name, uh, and multiple emails. The course also has its own data. In JSON, keys must be unique. Duplicates are ignored. Only the last defined key value pair is recognized. Only strings can be used as keys. You cannot use numbers or objects or arrays as keys. Moreover, keys are case sensitive. The key name with a lowercase n is not the same thing as the key name with an uppercase n. For best practice, use lower camel casing, where the first word is lowercase and the first letter of each subsequent word is uppercase. JSON data structures are also nested and form a tree data structure with a parent-child relationship. Let's take a look at a visualization of this object. Here we have the root object, which owns a student object and a course object. If I expand these out, student has multiple children as well. It has five children representing the first name, last name, NUID, GPA, and emails. Because there are multiple emails, emails itself has two children. JavaScript supports numeric data types. You can use integers or decimals. Typing numbers directly as values are called literals. There is no difference between a whole number and a whole number without a fractional part. So amount 5 and amount 5.0 are the same. Moreover, computers are finite machines. Not all values can be expressed. There's a maximum precision of about 14 to 16 decimal places. Here's a full example where we've defined several different number value types. Cost per unit has a value of 123.5. Num units has an integral value of 10, and pi has been defined out to five decimal places. A string is a collection of ordered characters. It may include any printable character or, in fact, Unicode characters, which are used to represent international symbols, such as Chinese, Japanese, or Korean fonts. A string begins and ends with double quotes. Special characters need to be escaped with a backslash. So for example, if you wanted to include a double quote inside of a string, you would need to include backslash double quote. If you wanted to include a black backslash, you would need to put two backslashes. Backslash n and backslash t represent an n-line character and a tab character respectively. Here are some more examples. The second example, nickname, we've escaped two characters, John the man student. That will not print back, if we were to print this out, it would not print backslash double quote, it would print, simply print double quote. The backslash is necessary to separate that particular double quote from the beginning and ending double quote on the string itself. A Boolean is a value that is either true or false. And in JSON, we use the keywords true and false. These are not strings, so you don't put double quotes around them. Here are some other examples. Is faculty, we set that equal to true is registered, we set that equal to false. An array is a collection of ordered elements. The syntax that we use in JSON is to use square brackets to begin and end an array. Each element is a value without a key, and each element is separated by a comma. So for example, in the following example, we have course, multiple courses, three to be exact. Each one is a string. The first two have commas at the end. An object is a collection of unordered pairs. An object basically encapsulates a set of key value data. We've already seen the root object, which is how we begin JSON data to begin with. But we also saw an example where we have nested objects. The previous example 
where we have a student and a course, those are part of the root object. The student itself is an object that contains five elements, and the course is an object that contains three elements. There's a special value called the null value. It's a special keyword, just like true and false, so we don't use double quotes to denote it. It's used to indicate missing, unknown, or invalid data. So for example, grad courses, we can set that equal to null using the null keyword directly to indicate that there are no grad courses. Proper JSON formatting is important. All brackets and quotes must be well balanced. Any beginning quote or bracket has to be closed and they have to be properly nested. You can't begin a curly bracket and end it with a square bracket. You should also have no trailing commas. The examples that we've seen so far are called pretty print representations, in which each element is on its own line and nested elements are properly indented. A computer doesn't really care if it's pretty or not. So an alternative is to use compact representation, where all extraneous uh, white space is removed. In fact, all white space outside of strings is completely ignored by a computer. By using compact representation, we can use fewer characters and have a, less, a quicker transmission time. If we don't have proper formatting, that means that a program can't parse our data. The program can't and shouldn't attempt to interpret what we meant if we make an error. So usually it'll just quit out or, or fail to process the data entirely. There are other types of errors that are not necessarily formatting errors, but that are syntax errors. The data may be formatted correctly, but contain, say, a misspelled key value, which would still cause a program to fail. The misuse of white space inside keys or incorrect casing would also be another cause of a syntax error. Consistent naming conventions, like the lower camel casing one that we've already mentioned, can prevent these errors. Data may be well formatted and free of syntax errors, but still may have some bad or garbage data. Misspelled data value, values or numeric values that are out of range, like a negative percentage, or missing data values, or misidentified data, data items, or simply inconsistent data. So for example, multiple spellings of the same person can all be, uh, be considered consistency errors and, and garbage data. We'll further explore this in the Hacktivities.